Hi, my name is Jason Mears. I'm a senior systems engineer in the UK and I'm also part of the CTO Ambassador Program. And today I'm going to talk to you about digital transformation and the software defined data center. Um, this slide deck I've also called uh, over various different um, sessions and, and in star training the big picture. I've referred to it as being uh, a, a brief introduction into how our cloud and multi-cloud strategy kind of plays out and all the how all the different pieces fit together. So this tends to be something that I uh, run through at star training or with new, new staff just to give them kind of a 10,000 feet version on on where we are, where we're going to and all the pieces that fit in. So um, I tend to start it with kind of a, a a bit of a history lesson on on where we started from where we are now and where we're going so I tend to talk about the fact that when I started as an IT manager um, it was quite common to buy individual servers um, the ones that you see up at the top here three red servers and I connect them together with a couple of switches and then I connect them together with a, a, a physical storage array and you tend to see this in in smaller IT shops quite often called a 321 three servers two switches one SAN or storage array uh, and it was quite common for small shops or small IT departments to run something like this. Uh, and although they were bought as individual servers, when VMware and virtualization came along, people realized, although they'd not specifically bought this to run VMware, you could install VMware over the top and start to get some of the benefits of virtualization. And what would happen was, um, you go from an environment where every server had to be identical and needed the same RAID controller or network card because it had different drivers or, or different capabilities. So you went from an environment where every server was un unique or different unless you bought them all together at the same time with identical hardware. And sometimes you'd even go as far as buying two of everything because the, the standby machine or the failover one had to be identical. Otherwise the software and the operating system and all the drivers just wouldn't work. So VMware changed that for us because we could run a virtual machine on pretty much any hardware using a standard set of virtual hardware that was abstracted from the real hardware underneath. So as an example of that, if the first server in this column here was a Dell server with an Intel network card and the next one was a HP server with a Broadcom network card and this one was a, a Lenovo or an IBM with a Realtek network card as long as all those servers were supported on the VMware hardware compatibility list it didn't matter that the hardware underneath was different because VMware presented a standard set of hardware and drivers underneath um, so essentially what we can say here is at this point we don't care what kind of hardware it is because VMware abstracts it. So that's the way I started and after a while people decided that virtualization wasn't something they were going to add on or do on a you spot, you know, case by case basis. They decided that actually they were going to start virtualizing everything or it was virtualized first and then they started buying hardware specifically to run VMware or to run vSphere. And that's when you would see people buying hardware typically very high-end processors, lots of memory, because they knew they were going to go from running one operating system and application on it to maybe running 10, 20, 30, you know, 40, 50 applications on it or virtual machines on it. So what you tended to do was, was see people buying hardware specifically for virtualization. And at this point, we're, we're also thinking about software-defined compute, software-defined networking and software-defined storage. So this might be something like vSAN and NSX, or it might be a traditional array like a NetApp or an EMC or any of those things that had software and plugins that made it talk intelligently to a hypervisor. So, you know, certainly um, I remember using things like NetApp storage arrays where there was a plugin or a, com a component or something that would say, I'm, I know how to do snapshots quicker than you do, so tell me you want a snapshot and I'll go and do it for you. But it's this intelligence that started being built in. So we've still got physical arrays, but they start to have some intelligence and additional software that can talk to the hypervisor, right up to the point where we go to something like vSAN, which is so integrated into the hypervisor, it's actually part of the hypervisor. And it's all software controlled. You literally just stick some traditional hard drives or flash drives or SSDs into the server and turn it into software defined storage. So there's a, you know, there's there's a story there from traditional uh, dumb storage to arrays that have some intelligence to software defined that actually is completely integrated into the hypervisor. 
we've also got um, software defined networking so things like NSX and uh, you know the products before that VCNS would allow you to perform network functions in the hypervisor rather than having to go out to a router a switch or a firewall on the physical network to go and do those things but we get to the point now here where not only do we not care specifically what kind of server it is but we don't care what kind of networking and what kind of storage it is either we're abstracting all this stuff because the thing that actually delivers value is applications and services it isn't looking at flashing lights and gigabits and megabits and all the other you know IOPS and spindles and everything else that goes with it it's just a means of running applications and services so we can kind of commoditize that and abstract it so we we no longer care about the specific video card, the disc or anything else, it's just a platform for running applications and services. So that's where most of my customers are now, this this bit here, where they build networks and environments specifically for virtualization and they're starting to look at software defined storage and networking in addition to software defined compute. But one of the things that's changed is when I worked in that environment, I would say I want my IT budget, I need this much money, and with it, I'm going to achieve this. And I would say things like, I'm going to buy the next generation of DL360 or the next generation of Dell server. And I'd say, I'm going to upgrade from Exchange 2010 to Exchange 2013, or I'm going to go from SharePoint version X to SharePoint version Y. I'd tell them, the, the, the business, what I was going to spend the money on. Um, and, and just assumed that there was going to be some benefit to the business that they had to figure out themselves. Now one of the things that seems to have changed is that IT don't just ask for money in order to do hardware or software upgrades. The thing that's changed is the business now seems to be telling the IT department this is what you, we would like you to deliver. Here are the applications and services that we want. Go and build them however you want but we don't care you know kind of the, the technical detail behind it we just want this delivered and if it's cheaper to buy it as a service or if it's cheaper to get it from a cloud provider then get it from there you know we're, we're not we're not in business to own servers and flashing lights and storage arrays and network cards we we only care about applications and services and all this hardware that you're buying just seems to be a necessary evil to get there so lots of my customers now have IT strategies that aren't written by the IT department anymore. They're actually written by the business. And the business is starting to ask them for all these things here. They're starting to ask questions about, should we move to cloud? What about IoT, Internet of Things? What about artificial intelligence? How do we manage risk and audit? How do we stay in compliance? What about automation? What about workforce mobility and people using tablets and smartphones and those kinds of things? What about authentication? We've got so many usernames and passwords for everybody that we just want one way of logging in or one set of usernames and passwords. So what you tend to find now is the business is saying, this is what we want. And sometimes the business will even create an IT strategy that they put on the website to say, this is the direction that we are going in. And, and in some ways, the IT department just have to read that strategy and figure out how to get there. Whereas before, they they bought the stuff, implemented the stuff, and left it to the business to figure out how to get the best use out of it. But we're kind of moving into this environment here now, where quite rightly, the business is saying, this is what we want out of IT, um, just make it happen. Um, so this is why I call it next generation. But um, in order to, you know, mo most people have got from this, most people are there, but this is what we're moving into now. It's actually dealing with the business, not necessarily the IT department. And that's why we have to talk now, not about technology, like we did for the first 10 or 15 years with vSphere, where we could talk about megabytes, milliseconds, we could talk about vMotion and DRS and how cool it was. What we have to talk now is we need to talk to the business about business outcomes and business capabilities around the things that worry them, that keep them awake at night. So. Again, spent quite a bit of time on that slide, but I just wanted to kind of talk it through and say how things have changed, that, that actually the business buys IT now, not the IT department. So our core offering is something we call VMware Cloud Foundation. And if you want to think about it in simple building block and Lego, which I'll do for the rest of this presentation, we have a cloud management platform, something that can manage data centers no matter where they are, whether it's our data center one or data center two or a cloud provider or a mega cloud provider, we just need a way of managing all of our stuff. And then we want a common set of software that we run 
you know, our data centers that give us these capabilities. So we need a cloud management platform to manage all of our stuff, and that stuff needs to give us software-defined compute, software-defined storage, and software-defined networking. And the reason why we need these is that only when we've got software-defined compute, software-defined storage, and software-defined networking can we move virtual machines, or more importantly, applications and services between data centers and cloud providers, and it still work. Because there's no point in moving the virtual machine to another data center if when we switch it on, it can't find its storage, or it can't uh, find its networking, or it's on a different network than it started off before, or that the storage is an old version of it. So we need all of these things in order to be able to move things around. Um, Otherwise, we can move them, they just don't work when we get there because the storage or the networking has failed. So, this is what we manage everything with, and this is what we need installed at every data center or cloud provider in order for it to all work seamlessly. So, if I expand that out a little bit, we've got the cloud management platform in the middle. This is vRealize Suite, and I've got my first data center. So, this is traditional servers with switches and uh, traditional storage. And that's running Cloud Foundation, so we've got software-defined compute, storage, and networking. That means virtual machines on there are um, able to be moved across other data centers or cloud providers as long as we have this common set of capabilities or this Lego brick here, which gives us all that, that common set of features. I then might have another data center, and in this one I've done hyper-converged. I've got servers where the storage and some of the networking functions are actually built into the server rather than it be separate components it's a hyper converged infrastructure this might be something like a VX rail or a vSAN ready node and again it doesn't matter on the form factor the only thing that matters is we're running this common set of software down the bottom cloud foundation so I can now move things from that data center to that data center and they work because it's a common set of software running underneath and I've got complete visibility of it through our cloud management platform so that's good, but why just stop there? What if I can use a VMware cloud provider who also has hardware that runs this same software stack? So I don't need to know what hardware it is and I don't even care what hardware it is. I've just decided that I don't want to pay for the building, the physical security, the power, the cooling, the hardware and the patching. I just want to buy these capabilities. So I go to a VMware cloud provider that gives me all the features in Cloud Foundation, Software Defined Compute, Storage and Networking. And now I've got the ability to move stuff from here to here, up to there or back, anywhere around. I can start moving things around anywhere I want to because I've got this common set of capabilities all managed from this cloud management platform. Um, expand it even further. Um, you may have heard uh, last year and this year there have been lots of announcements about Amazon Web Services running VMware on AWS or VMC on AWS which is Amazon running in parallel with their existing or traditional um, cloud services they also have Amazon hardware in Amazon data centers that run directly on the hardware so bare metal but they, it's not sat on top of anything else They the servers that they have run VMware vSphere, um, vSAN and NSX so the only thing running on that server is a complete VMware stack so again they just become another endpoint where we can move virtual machines all managed through the same cloud management platform so what we're seeing here is no matter what kind of hardware you've got in one data center or the other or no matter which VMware cloud provider you use whether that's any of the four and a half thousand existing ones or one of the newer ones like uh, like AWS as long as you have this common set of capabilities and features this Lego brick as long as you've got that at a data center you can move things around as and when you want to as and when the business needs you to or as and when the costing um, it, it makes sense to move things from a cost perspective so if it's cheaper to move a service from here to AWS uh, and you can see the cost through something like Vrealize Business just right click and move it or migrate it if it's cheaper to run something here than it is in there then again just move it across and migrate it you might even want to close down this second data center and take on one of these as a replacement so you might keep a primary data center and your second one might be a cloud provider or um, VMware and AWS. We're just talking conceptually here, but hopefully you can see that the actual technology underneath this becomes irrelevant. We just now care about having a common platform 
um, that we can run our, our applications and services across with very little regard for where the data center is, who owns it and what kind of hardware we've got. So again, just to move on, I talked to you about this full software stack and cloud foundation, this Lego brick that everything sits on. But this isn't the only part of the story. I want to show you how everything else plugs into this. So on top of Cloud Foundation, we've got the Cloud Management Platform, which is vRealize Suite. We've talked about those. On top of that, you can also use our end user computing. So things like Horizon and Airwatch and Workspace ONE. When you deploy um, Horizon, um, that solution sits on top of all the core features down here. When you want to monitor it and manage it, you'll see that the dashboards for user performance application performance logon times are actually in VROPS which is part of our cloud management platform so if you've already got this and you manage it with this when you take on another one of our components it all plugs in natively to the management platform and the underlying core capability under there when you look at things like device mobility so AirWatch or even combine the two together in AirWatch 1 it all talks to and reports into and sees a common set of, of um, tools and capabilities. So um, if you've got vSphere on site and cloud management it makes no sense to go with anything else other than Horizon or AirWatch because all of these things can talk to each other. So I'm going to give you an example of this. Let's say I've got a mobile device which is managed by AirWatch and I'm using Workspace ONE to talk through to Horizon or Horizon apps or app volumes to deliver an application to my device. Airwatch uh, can look at the health of the device, see what kind of software and patches, the network location, any of those things, and it can report back to Horizon, and Horizon can say, okay, you have got an antivirus, you are a network that I trust, um, you haven't been jailbroke or rooted, so I'll allow you to do something, but it might say, because you're not actually at head office, I'm going to let you do all this stuff, but I don't want to let you cut and paste, and I don't want to let you print because I've got some intelligence from AirWatch about where this device currently sits and, and you know whether it's a work device or a personal one or where I'm using it from. Maybe it's a doctor and a doctor can use his device at home um, to look at his emails or look at you know some systems but he can't be looking at patient records or x-rays if he's at home or using his own personal device. So here's the intelligence here that can talk to that one. Once the end user computing bit, the let's say it's the horizon bit, is in, that will report into the cloud management platform about uh, application performance and end user performance, how long it took to log on, how long it took to print, so it reports into there. But equally, if we've got security from the AirWatch point of view and security through the um, Horizon point of view, we can even talk down to the software defined networking bit NSX and we can create a secure tunnel all the way through here and do a per application VPN. So some confusing terminology there, but what we're essentially saying is if you launch an application on your phone, we will create the minimum amount of network privilege to get you to the application and into the data center and wherever it's running. So we'll give you just enough access to that application and nothing else. And the only reason we can do that is because we've got this kind of capability and integration across all of these products. So again, it's an example which is slightly technical, but what we're saying here is um, we've got an end-to-end -end solution right from the smartphone or tablet in the user's hand to the desktop or the application they're receiving, right down to the security and the data center so that they only see the burn minimum or have only got access to the burn minimum of the environment. What you might see with other solutions is the device with a username and password is allowed into the entire network or the entire data center and you just have to hope that the user doesn't do anything malicious or have anything malicious on that phone or that device. So again, kind of overplaying it a little bit here but the more of our products and solutions you have the better they get and just to say that they're all designed to work together and they all sit on this common foundation which is cloud foundation this piece of lego that just you know makes the data centers work so one of the things we've talked about when I, when I was on the previous slide saying we used to talk to techies about tech and we used to sell IT to IT department, the thing that's changed is we're now more focused on the end user and the end user experience and less about how it's actually done or the technical detail behind it. We want to deliver applications and services and good user experience to the end user, whether that's uh, an employee, a student, a doctor or a nurse or a, or a customer, we care about this end user experience and making it as simple as possible for that user. So 
just to summarize that then and, and kind of put some words around it rather than products what we're promising is a true cross cloud architecture if you use our vCloud foundation and our, our kind of Lego brick for building data centers and clouds and if you do that we can we can get we can um, allow you to use um, any application on any device on any cloud so you know right from the end you can pick which device you want and we're going to secure it we're going to deliver that application or that desktop to you and we're going to do it from anywhere because we're sat on this kind of um, infrastructure layer down at the bottom and what we're promising the IT department and the user is we'll make it consumer simple for the user but enterprise secure for the business so we're giving you all the benefits of something like the you know the Apple store or that kind of experience where everything just works first time and it's easy but we're doing it in a way which is secure and it isn't going to worry the business or the IT department so just to move on a little bit past that here's where we started we talked about um, existing infrastructure and how it had moved on um, and the fact that this is what people or businesses are asking for now and the key point was we're now selling solutions to the business rather than technical info and technical capability to the IT department this stuff that businesses are asking for and everything that goes with it can be done with a central cloud management platform and any data center or cloud provider running the, the cloud foundation components um, these are the things that we deliver and stack up on top of each other but this is what it means to the end user so again this is a kind of a more of a conversational deck I've done this deck with customers and I've got through it in 10 minutes and I've done this deck with customers and it's gone on for over two hours um, it, it just can be sometimes a good talking point for you know kind of where we were where we are now and where we're going to and actually about delivering applications services and capabilities rather than technical um, things like you know megabits IOPS milliseconds all those things that we traditionally used to talk to customers about so that's the end of my big picture or digital transformation um, piece again it's more of a of a thought-provoking or a discussion uh, you know based based presentation but um, like I, said, I hope you found that useful so again I'm Jason Mears I'm a senior systems engineer in the UK and I'm also part of the uh, CTO ambassador program but uh, thank you very much for your time